A very good morning, my dear class 8 students. A warm welcome to this presentation. This is Sister Nancy, your science teacher, presenting to you Chapter 2 Science, Microorganisms, Friends and Foes. Students, kindly take your science textbook and flip to page number 22 to begin our lesson. Are you all ready with the textbook? If so, let's go with the chapter. In this session, we are going to discuss introduction to microorganisms, types of microorganisms, friendly microorganisms, harmful microorganisms, food preservation. So we are going to introduce ourselves to microorganisms. We are going to shake hands with microorganisms. So before we begin our chapter, let me ask you a simple question. Can you see all that exist and live around us? I'm sure the answer is no, because there are many things that we are not able to see with our naked eyes. What are microorganisms? Organisms that cannot be seen with naked eye and can be seen only with the help of microscope are known as microorganisms. Microorganisms are unicellular, which means they, the entire organism is made up of a single cell. So, if these microorganisms are so small, where do they live? That could be the next question which comes to our mind. Yes, we are going to see where these microorganisms live. Microorganisms thrive in almost any kind of environment. They live in air, water, soil, hot springs, snow, saline water, decaying flesh and living bodies of plants and animals. Which means microorganisms are everywhere and in every place. What are the types of microorganisms? The five types of microorganisms are bacteria, viruses, algae, fungi, and protozoa. We shall see in detail each type of these microorganisms. Bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular, which means single cell or the entire organism is made up of a single cell. They may be found in colonies, meaning they may be found in groups. They can be rod-like bacteria as we see in the picture, example bacilli. They can be spherical bacteria, example cocci, and spiral bacteria, example spiral. Some bacteria are heterotrophic. They depend on other living things for food. Whereas some other bacteria are autotrophic. That is, they make their own food. Autotrophic bacteria contain chlorophyll and make food through the process of photosynthesis. They are called photosynthetic bacteria. Some bacteria obtain energy from chemical reactions of inorganic substances. Such bacteria are said to be chemosynthetic. Bacteria can also be aerobic or anaerobic. Aerobic bacteria require oxygen for respiration, whereas anaerobic bacteria do not need oxygen. They respire in the absence of oxygen. 
We come to the next type, fungi. Fungi are unicellular or multicellular organisms. They range in size from single-celled organisms such as yeast to multicellular organisms such as mushrooms. Fungi can grow in the dark. They cannot make their own food as they do not contain chlorophyll. They are heterotrophic. Some live as saprophytes, example, mushroom. They feed themselves on dead plants and animals. Whereas some are parasitic, the fungi is what is shown in bread and in onion. They feed themselves on living hosts. Virus Virus lie on the borderline of living and non-living. Example, influenza virus, chickenpox virus, and coronavirus, which the entire humanity is suffering today. They lie on the borderline of living and non-living meaning, which means if they are outside of the host, they pretend as if they are dead. But once they are into the host, they are very, very active. And virus are so imaginably small that you cannot see with an ordinary microscope. It can be seen only under an electron microscope. Viruses are of various forms. They can be like wire, rounded, polyhedral or cuboidal. Algae Algae may be called found colonial or filamentous. That means they may be found in groups. They are mostly aquatic. Unicellular algae are found in water as phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons are plant-like floating microorganisms. They live near the surface of the water because they require light for photosynthesis. Example, Spirogria and Volvex. Protozoa. Protozoa are heterotrophic and they are also mostly aquatic. They depend on other living organisms for food. Protozoa need moisture to live. They become inactive in dry conditions and cannot survive in temperatures higher than 80 degrees Celsius. Examples are Paramosium and Amoeba. So these are the different five types of microorganisms. And you know microorganisms are also useful to us. They are not always harmful. There are some microorganisms which are useful to us. We shall see what are the useful microorganisms. Microorganisms such as yeast and lactobacilli are used in the production of food like bread, dosa, idli, and so on. They are also used for production of antibiotic and vaccines, example streptomycin and polio. Fungi and bacteria break down complex minerals into simple forms. They increase the fertility of soil. Certain types of ba soil bacteria such as rhizoboam and blue-green algae enrich the soil by converting nitrogen from the air into nitrates and nitrates. These microbes are also called biological nitrogen fixers. You know, nitrogen is essential for plant growth and is used by living organisms 
to produce complex organic molecules like proteins and these molecules are essential to sustain life. Microorganisms are also useful in cleaning the environment in which way they help in decomposing dead organisms. So microorganisms are also useful to us in very many ways. Classification of disease. Basically there are two types of diseases. Communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases. Communicable diseases are those diseases which can be transmitted from person to person. Example, coronavirus, chickenpox, etc. Non-communicable diseases are those which may not be transmitted from person to person. Example, if a person died of heart attack, it doesn't mean that those persons who take care of the patient may not get heart attack. So that is an example of non-communicable diseases. What are the ways in which microorganisms are spread? Basically three ways of, sp of spreading microorganisms. First, from infected persons through air, water, food and physical contact. Example like common cold, if someone gets cold, it is possible that it can be spread from person to person through air, water, food and physical contact. Microorganisms also can spread through insects and animals. Through insects, malaria, dengue, it is spread to living organisms through mosquitoes, Anopheles mosquitoes and Aedes mosquitoes. And through animals, rabies, we get it from dogs, from monkeys, red bite fever from Aedes mosquito. So these are the dis microorganisms we get through insects and animals. Microorganisms also can be spread through contaminated food. Example, spoiled food, food poisoning. What happens when you get contaminated food? You get stomach upset, you get vomiting sensation and stomach pain, etc. So microorganisms can also get inside us through contaminated food, which we need to take care. Disease causing microorganisms in animals, tuberculosis or TB is caused by microorganisms, bacteria. Foot and mouth disease, it is caused by virus. Ringworm is caused by fungi. We can see in the picture this cow is having ringworm. Amoebic dysentery is caused by microorganisms, protozoa. In plants, citrus canker. We see this kind of defect in fruits like oranges and lemons. It is caused by bacteria. Rust of wheat is caused by fungi. Yellow vein mosaic of bindi or lettuce finger is caused by virus. The leaves of this lettuce finger is supposed to be green but it's in yellow in mosaic image. It's because of the attack of virus. We come to the last part of the topic. Food preservation. We can preserve food chemically and physically. So by chemical method and also by physical method we can preserve food from being attacked by microorganisms. Common salt. I'm sure all of you have taken pickle. A lot of salt in it. Common salt is good for preservation of food. A lot of sugar is also used in the preservation of food. Oil and vinegar. 
microorganisms cannot live in oil and vinegar. Sodium metabisulfate or sodium, sodium benzoate. They are preservatives which can use to preserve food. Physical method. We can, there are also ways of preserving food through physical method. Chilling by lowering the temperature, we can preserve food and by heating, example, a pasturation of milk, by increasing the temperature, you are able to preserve food. Through drying, microorganisms lives in moisture. So when you dry food, you can still preserve food items from being attacked by microorganisms. Canning, by tightening the food items inside the can, inside the bottle, you can also preserve food. And by freezing, by lowering the temperature, we can preserve food. So these are the different methods, chemical methods and physical methods of how we can preserve food. I'm sure you have understood something. Kindly go back to the PPT and go through and try to understand more. Thank you for listening to me patiently and if any doubt you are welcome to call me up or to contact me. Thank you. Have a pleasant time dear students.